Coming up on Mobile Learning in the Classroom, Learning to Code. Hi, my name is Guy Trainin and this is Mobile Learning in the Classroom from Tech Edge and today we're talking about learning to code and we're doing this episode in the summer although I think it will apply at any point in time. Uh, but in summer it's actually a great opportunity if kids are at home and they have some spare time to put aside some time every day or a few times a week to really learn something that doesn't happen enough in school and I would argue that coding is one of these things and we really want kids to start thinking about coding and interacting with coding fairly early and we can start that uh, as early as you want, kindergarten or beyond because some of the interfaces are completely visual, others have text in them but really an opportunity to start start to get the curiosity going, to get kids creating through programming, lots of opportunities there and summer is a great time to talk about it. What I do want to say about interacting with all of these is you really, really want to have conversations about what kids create and not just let them play around because sometimes when kids play around all they do is trial and error, they're not really thinking about their step, they're not really thinking about design and they don't really always even get really good results. So questioning techniques, really saying how did you do that, why did you make this choice, uh, what do you think you should do now, what would you, how would you do it uh, if you had to do it all over again are great questions to have kids start thinking about what does it mean to program and how does the design process really fit into that idea of programming which is really really important. We want them to be metacognitive to think about how they do this. So I, I do have a few uh, apps and websites that can be used for that. The first one is Tinker. I'm going to show Tinker the way it shows up on a Chromebook but you have to know that you can get Tinker on the iPad as well. Which I just had to choose one way and you can log into Tinker as a student, as a parent and as a teacher. So I have a parent account and I have also an account for uh, one of my kids and you can see uh, you immediately when you go on it as the parent you can see how many activities were uh, completed and if you go to the overview you can also see what's available for somebody as a the free account and what can you do if you actually subscribe so you can get quite a bit of practice and quite a bit of thinking done without subscribing uh, without paying at all you do need to have a, a, an email and a and a login, if you do think it's worthwhile, you have some budget, definitely get the full uh, panel because it does uh, provide a lot more. So if you look at the process of the activities that uh, we have right now, you can see that, uh, for example, uh, let me go to what I have uh, created. So let's give an example of a, of a simple a command. This is a level that I've tried before and um, it's fairly simple. You have a character, you have to tell it what to do, you need to move to turn right and retrieve the coin that's on the bottom. So you have a move and you have to select how much. You can see that there's a scale here. My guess is it's about 400. Then we need to move and this allows you to choose which direction we're moving in and then we need to move again uh, probably another 400 although I'm not sure let's try to run the program and see if it works so you can actually run the program and debug and this is the, pl the point where you start asking questions uh, because you can really show what has happened and you can go to the next level and obviously each challenge gets more and more uh, sophisticated and therefore uh, more challenging. So this one is called Tinker. It's got lots of other options but you get the hang of it. It's game based, it's, ch it's new challenges every time, it gives positive feedback and if it's not working it'll show you what didn't work because you can see the interaction on uh, the table. The other thing that I want to show as uh, we go through this and let it uh, just load is that while you're writing this program right you're you're writing this program you're adding this thing right? I can uh, do this and this and you can actually just hide everything and watch what's going on or watch uh, the program and from anywhere that you want to navigate it's very 
easy to go back home to replay or control uh, and including uh, a help function uh, so kids can actually work on their own rather well. So this is called Tinker. It's a great option and um, I find this very interactive. I find that my kids love uh, playing with it and the fact that there's feedback and you can actually look at the progress that kids have made over time is really useful as a teacher and as a parent because you really get a sense of what's going on. So this one is Tinker. The next one I want to talk about is Code.org. Code.org is very common in uh, classrooms right now. They supply tremendous amounts of free materials uh, to teachers, but also to parents. And uh, obviously the main idea is to help kids do all of this. And what I love is they've really uh, worked with content providers. So they're working with Microsoft through Minecraft, they're working with Disney for um, working with Anna and Elsa, as you can see on the right side. On the left side, you can see they're working with Disney on, through Star Wars. And I love the fact that there's a lot of guiding uh, videos. So for example, if you start um, building a galaxy with codes and you try something uh, right now, you will get a video that explains a little bit of a promo why you want to code. So this one has um, a little bit of Star Wars there, which is attractive to some kids, not to everybody, but there are other options as well. It doesn't have to be Star Wars. And you get people Hi. to talk about I'm Kathleen Kennedy, exactly I'm why coding Wars is Force good, Awakened. but a few, about a minute into this, and uh, you can see, we start actually talking about how do we code. So you get this introduction to coding by, as you can see, building your own Star Wars game. That's the end goal, although in the beginning you just learn how to do some simple commands. And the approach is blocks, very similar to Tinker that we just saw. Also worked with blocks, very, very simple way to uh, work through that. So it walks you through the activities. And um, I'm not going to watch the whole movie, but you can see that now I need to give commands. So now I've got the program on the right and, and the actual field on uh, the left. And there's a run button under it. So when run, move right. And let's say move right again. And let's see what happens if I run it. And one of the features I love about this is you can actually show the actual code so it'll generate the same code you just wrote. It'll generate uh, the code that is already in those blocks. So it actually shows you the programming language that you would really be doing if you were uh, coding it on your own. And eventually it leads you to coding your ga uh, game on your own. So uh, this is code.org, lots of opportunities. Uh, as you saw, there's Star Wars, there's uh, coding with uh, uh, with Anna and Elsa, so it really is trying to appeal simply to a wide audience by having different options. And this is the video that explains how you program with Anna and Elsa. That's based on uh, ice skating. Again, a nice application there. So this is code.org, lots of other things to explore. Most of the content, actually all of the content is free and available. You do need to register. Uh, and you can do that as a classroom. So again, great way to learn about coding. The last thing I want to uh, talk about is an uh, app and an, an app on the, uh, on the Chromebook that is called Hopscotch. We talked about Hopscotch before, but they've really, really done a uh, new work on Hopscotch. So this is Hopscotch. Hopscotch has lots of projects already loaded. So you can see what I love about Hopscotch, unlike the others, is you have a lot of access to things that others have created using Hopscotch. So you have an idea of what the capabilities are and you can see some cool things that others can program. And that, that allows you to think quite a bit about what you want to do. And what you can do on Hopscotch is really a make or view. Right now we're in the make section. So you can, for example, create a blank project or draw something or do a geometry dash, lightsabers. You can see that there are lots of options of things to do. So let's, for example, create a flappy bird. And what I love about this is if you can see immediately, we have an actual video showing you how to program this. And what I love even further is while she's talking, 
I can do some of these things. So I can actually select and start programming while she's talking about how you program. So I can stop her video and do what she just said. It stays in the corner and we can go on. And this is a great use of that picture inside picture feature that iPad can do right now. And it really walks you through the steps and you keep the video on and you're creating at the same time. Great way to learn. So for example, we created a character and then you make the rules. For example, when the character is tapped, what happens? Uh, the character jumps, right? So now, right, I've done something. I've programmed this character to do something, right? And uh, once the project is done, if I press on the character, it'll jump. And it allows you to actually make more rules because this is a Flappy Bird kind of game. So this is a side scrolling with obstacles and you can create these obstacles and program everything that's happening there. And the video will guide you through it. So the projects are not just there, but they're actually each one of them guided with a person talking to you, walking you through the steps. So it's not reading and it's not necessarily guesswork. I like that approach very, very much. Uh, just like I like uh, the use of videos in code.org. Code although I think this picture inside pictures is a really useful way to do this. So this is Hopscotch. And uh, today we talked about three different apps that are used to teach uh, coding. Again, the emphasis is not just to work through these apps to get reports on what kids are doing, but actually to have these metacognitive questions that really apply to the design process and as a result to the programming process. And that's it for this time. I'll see you next time on Mobile Learning in the Classroom.